Hi, and welcome back to the second part of the MOSA Math Lesson 2 Extension video lesson. Yesterday, we talked about the law of superposition, which says that the rock layers on the bottom are typically the oldest, and that's in an undisturbed rock layer. When I left last time, we did this one together, and I challenged you to these two puzzles. So let's reveal the answers today on which event happened when. So what do you think the oldest rock layer in this diagram would be? If you guessed H, you'd be correct. Followed by G, then F, then E, then D. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. You can see that those layers are kind of wavy. That's probably due to compression of the rock. But here's where you have to look very carefully. What comes next? After layer D, this cut in the rock layer occurred. So this line from Y to X would be next. So this would be like a fault or a crack, maybe due to an earthquake or due to extreme pressure from this rock being folded. So H, G, F, E, D, we'll call this fault line Y to X. And then a, this is an igneous rock intrusion, and you can see that it goes right over top of this fault line. So A <clears throat> comes after this fault line, followed by C, and then B. So did you get that one right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's try the next one. This one's a little bit more colorful. Now this rock has been tilted due to uplifting and geologic processes. And there is a lot going on. Now you might have noticed some of the rock layers are squiggly at the boundary line and some are flat. Usually when scientists see um, irregularities in the rock layer, that's due to erosion. And sometimes we call that an unconformity. So back to the beginning, which rock layer here is the oldest? E would be the oldest followed by G, then L, and then C. Now you can see that these rock layers are offset. So after C was laid down, then we have this fault labeled H. All right, so that broke through that rock. Now what comes after this fault H? Then we have M, and then D, and then J, which is this brick-like pattern and then A. Now how do we know A came last? Because it went through all of these rock layers. So for A to push up through into J, J had to be there first. Now it looks to me like probably there are some rock layers missing. So what comes after J? Well there might have been some rock layers at one point in time that are now gone. That happens all the time. When scientists are looking through rock columns and layers, there's some layers that have just been eroded away and are gone forever. But after J, we have N, then K, then B, and finally F. So hopefully you guys did a good job on that. Now today we're gonna to talk about types of fossils. Yesterday I also challenged you to do the Mosa Mac fossil arranging card game. I went back and made an online version of this and we're gonna do it together today after we talk about the main types of fossils. So fossils are only found in sedimentary rock. <clears throat> Let's think about that for a second. Why aren't fossils in igneous rock? Well, igneous rock is formed from cooling magma. Do you think a fossil would survive being in molten magma? Not a chance. How about metamorphic rock? Why not in metamorphic rocks? Well, metamorphic rocks are made with extreme heat and pressure. So fossils wouldn't survive in a metamorphic rock easily at all. <clears throat> so fossils are going to be a big clue in understanding how old rock layers are. Now, there are ways, we'll talk about tomorrow, that scientists have put a number or an exact age on a rock layer. That's actually really, really tricky to do. Generally, when we're using fossils to figure out how old a rock layer is, we have a relative age, older than, younger than, or we might have a range of 50 to 100 million years, which is 
a crazy amount of time. But there are some fossils that we know only lived on Earth in a really specific point in time. There have been major, in fact, five major mass extinctions that we know of in Earth's geologic time. And if we find a specific fossil, that can tell us the rock layer is an approximate age from this particular time frame. We're going to talk more about index fossils when we go back to the Mosamac activity, and you'll be asked to do some questions on today's exit ticket about index fossils as well. So there are five main types of fossils. Some are more common than others. The most common type of fossil is this one right here. This is called a mold and cast. So some living creature, usually something that contained hard parts, so bones or shells, was buried in sediments. The original material made an imprint in the sediment and has long since disappeared. Common misconception about fossils is that that's the original material from the living thing. It's not. It's an imprint. And sometimes these imprints can be filled in over time with dissolved minerals and other sediments that kind of fill the shape in. So imagine you're making a sand castle and you fill sand into the mold for the sand castle and you, and you uncover it. So mold and cast fossils give you the imprint of something that used to be there. Okay, there are carbon film fossils, and these are actual remains of a living creature. These are oftentimes plant remains, and there is carbon in all living things. And if a plant is pressed between rock layers, sometimes the only thing that remains is the fossilized carbon that used to be in that living thing. And it's very, very thin, so we call it a carbon film. Now I have a nice chunk of this in my desk at school. This is petrified wood. Some people have seen petrified wood in the petrified forests out west of the United States, and it's pretty darn cool. It looks just like a real piece of wood. And these are not pieces of wood. These are actually minerals that have taken the place of the living material that used to be the trees so the fibers of the tree trunk and the bark and it's basically swapped places from the living material to minerals that harden so something that might be kind of light to pick up in, in um, real life when it was still wood is actually really really heavy because now it's rock so petrified remains are common for plant materials as well now, I bet you all have seen fossils like this before. This is a, a trace fossil. This happens to be, oh, I'm sorry, this is the preserved remains. We'll talk about this one first. This is an actual insect trapped in amber. Okay, you guys, Jurassic Park, right? They found the insect with the mosquito and the blood, and they extracted the blood with the dinosaur DNA. You know how it goes. But we do find fossilized tree sap with insects trapped inside. And this is actually pretty cool because they're very well preserved and it is the actual living um, creature. So insects are often caught in tree sap. We found bits and pieces of other plant material and preserved remains, but we call fossilized sap amber. All right, so these are preserved remains. Now, there is another type of preserved remain fossil that we have. Um, found we have found preserved remains of like mammoths in ice so ice has the same effect where it can preserve something back from the ice age and um, some bogs peat moss bogs uh, are so acidic that they can preserve remains as well as tar pits can also preserve remains so this is a pretty interesting area of study with fossils because it's really one of the best ways for us to see living material of things that have long since been gone. This last one is trace fossils. <coughs> and trace fossils are actually just clues to how living things behaved. So we have footprints. Sometimes you can find fossilized burrows from underground. Um, we found fossilized dinosaur nests. 
So really cool things about how animals behave. We can see migration patterns um, that have been fossilized in mud in riverbeds for millions of years. So back to the topic of index fossils. So I will quickly go over this slide with you here. Index fossils <clears throat> are used to determine the age of a rock, okay? So it's not an exact number. This is an age that we call, sometimes we call it relative age. Um, it's either older than or younger than. So yesterday when we talked about the law of superposition, we talked about rocks that are on the bottom being the oldest and the rocks at the top as being the youngest. So this Mosamac activity that was printed for you is a really good way to put the law of superposition together with index fossils. Now I know it's kind of tiny, but just follow along with me. I'll read the cards to you out loud. These are five snapshots of fossils. I'm sorry, six snapshots of fossils found in six rock layers that date back to the Paleozoic era. And we're going to talk about the geologic time scale tomorrow. But the Paleozoic era dated back about 540 to 240 million years ago. And the activity said to start with a card with Mosamac on it first as the oldest. So I'm going to put this at the bottom. Now, I see two fossils in this layer. There's a trilobite, which a lot of people are familiar with trilobites, and there are brachiopods. So I'm going to go up here and look, and I'm going to say, hmm, what would be the next logical layer? Do I have anything with brachiopods or trilobites in it? The first thing that jumps out at me is this one right here, because I see a trilobite. So I'm going to drag this down and put it right on top of this next one. Okay. So if I found a trilobite, um, I would know it's approximate age. I see trilobites here, but now I have some new fossils. So these are creatures that may have evolved over time, and now they appear in the fossil record. So what do I have here? I have some gastropods, some brachiopods, and, and eurypterid. And I see eurypterids all over up here. So let's see what makes sense. I've got, hmm. Right here, I have a eurypterid and a gastropod. So let's bring this one down and see if that works. We might have to go back and change it. Okay. All right. So now I have a match here and here. So two gastropods, eurypterids here and here. Looks good. All right, so in this next layer, I've got, I still got Eurypterus, so they must have been on Earth for a good amount of time. Notice trilobites are gone. Trilobites must have gone extinct. Um, I have a few other things popping up in here. All right, so I see this here. I think this is Placoderm. Ooh, and I see this here. So I'm going to scooch this over. Put that right there. Am I gonna run out of room? Slide it down. Okay. Now I've got two left. Oh, here's another one with the Eurypterus. So those suckers lived on Earth for a long time. Yeah. This matches. This matches. And I believe this last one, let's see if it'll fit. It's not happy about fitting, but that's where it goes. So this matches with this, and we see the first reptiles. So I don't know if you notice these little letters. It goes C, O, S, D, C, A, and P. Those actually match up to the time periods in the Paleozoic era, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. So that was the little clue. Um, these are all further divisions of time that scientists use 
um, to help us understand geologic time. So the index fossils in each rock layer can tell us a little bit about the time period. And if scientists were investigating rock layers somewhere else on a different continent, they often will see the same types of fossils and scientists can share that information. So your job today, after having gone through <clears throat> this activity is to do the exit ticket in ECHO. We're not gonna do the written response this year. And I'm gonna show you where it's at. So this says lesson 2E exit ticket. And this is an online quiz. And you actually have the ability to restart it and retry it as many times as you want to get the best score possible. So the end of today's lesson, is for you to do the exit ticket. And I can give you a little preview of it. Looks kind of like this. You're gonna be asked to investigate some rock layers with some index fossils in it. So good luck. Our last lesson of the week is going to be tomorrow on the geologic time scale. And I'm really excited to talk to you about that and show you some pictures from my adventures at the Smithsonian when I got to see some really old rocks. So until tomorrow, see you later.